You're going to push record? I have. Oh. Hello. <laughs> you boys not going to say hello? Hello. <laughs> We should not Hi. Bought, we should not have bought crisps for this. Uh, what are we on now, episode 9? 9 or 10, I can't remember. One of them, yeah. It's good that we keep track of this, isn't it? Oh, my, my phone on. Sorry. <coughs> um, so unprofessional. So. Because this is the most professional podcast out there. <laughs> of course. We're eating crisps while talking about... While talking about films. Today we're going to talk about films. Where are we going to put the intro, Ethan? Um, give it, give it, give it a second. Like in one second or just... Do it now! Oh my god, that was really rude. I was talking. Well, it's there, it's done, so... Yeah, you missed the intro now, Harry, sorry. Sorry, you didn't get to watch it. It's um, fine. I'm going to have some We're going to talk about loads of various things today. There's a new film that's come out that people might have heard of that we'll talk about later. I think it's like, yeah, some some sort of Marvel film, I think. I don't know what film. Yeah, it's a DC film. film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Chapman. Yeah, Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. <laughs> I didn't mind Blue Beetle, to be fair. I think it's it's alright. A lot of people came back when it came out, but I thought it was okay. I thought it was alright. It looked really nice in 4K as well, which helps. Because we get sidetracked really easily, don't we? I know, but it's we really nice. Really it's yeah, all, it's all the fun, isn't it? This it's idea was brought by John. Oh, yeah, we're well, going with it. And uh, his idea was to think of 13's reason. Fuck me. 13 reasons, reasons why. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> Can't even think of one. <laughs> <laughs> Put me off now. Uh, <laughs> um, so we have our favourite films, all three of us, and we have to think of. Th- I've got a cop. 13 reasons <coughs> why. Are you okay? Choking on a crisp. <coughs> oh, we're talking about the Netflix show, 13 Reasons Why. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Cool. We're going to talk about 13 Reasons Why. Come on, yeah, please come Season back. 1 was good, then it fell off and then made it up. I haven't seen any of it. No, uh, not so much. I heard some guy gets raped with a broom. Yeah, that does happen. How weird is that? Why would you do that? Um, the characters are dicks when they do it. You don't want them to like, you're not meant to like them. Just choose your penis, right? Why would you use a broom? Anyway, so yeah, we all have our favourite films and we have to... We have to explain 13 reasons why it is our favourite film. Yeah. So we're going to go around... We're uh, not starting with me. No, we're going to go around... We're going to start with Harry. And say what is our favourite film, and then each, and then one of us is going to talk at a time of their 13 reasons why it's their favourite film. Yeah. So yeah, we will start with uh, Harry. Oh, we'll start with Harry, the number one. Oh, well, allegedly. It's not an interesting, it's the, the Dark Knight's my favourite film. Uh, and I've done so one. well that I've got, currently got five reasons, so I'm working on it. No, I just couldn't think of 13. Fair enough. Hopefully more will come to me. <clears throat> so Nathan, what was uh, your favourite film? My favourite film at the moment is Midsommar. I know, I know it used to be The Elephant Man. <laughs> but then I changed my lists up, so now I have a top list of films that make me cry. And the Elephant Man's on there, so... As well as it chapter two, but we won't go there. Um, yeah, Midsummer. Although anyone that watches my channel will know that Midsummer is my number one. I think. I don't know if I mentioned it on there. You've probably mentioned it a few times. Yeah. What about you, Ethan? So my favourite film is a lot different to so used to, and mine Star is Star Wars. Adventures of Sith. Yeah. No, mine. Mine is The Incredibles. Oh. Why is it not Star Wars? I don't know. I, I, I honestly well. can't. They're both on the same level for me. I can't tell them apart, like... And I thought, I'll either go for my actual answer, or I'll go for the answer that doesn't make me look like a knobhead. I don't know why The Incredibles make me look like a knobhead, but there we are. But yeah, so yeah, sod it. My favourite film is The Incredibles. Because, yeah. And we'll get into the reasons why after. Hopefully for a of them. Yeah, yeah, well, I have six, so I'm almost halfway <laughs> there. It doesn't have to be 13, just because I've done 13. Yeah, it's not it was really, really easy for me. And to okay. be fair, Midsummer's really easy to find 13 reasons why you like it. So, Unless, right. of course, you don't like it. Start off with you. What is your five reasons why you like the Dark Knight? <laughs> or am I doing all five at the same time? Or? No. Yeah. Uh, oh. or, 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 you do your first one, 
and then we discuss it. Okay. Uh, and then you do your second one. Okay. okay. And then we discuss it. Of course, we're doing all that, yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like a podcast. Who are the fault? Yeah. Well, my, my first reason is super obvious is Heath Ledger. Why is that obvious? Because it's Heath Ledger's Joker. <laughs> it's literally, he makes that film. Do you think he did it better than Mac and Phoenix? Um, well, it's hard because they're both completely different. Yep. Wacky thinks it's more of a realistic, if it happened in real life, that's how it would happen. And there is elements of realism in Heath Ledger's, but I think the, the contraptions she has and all the gadgets is just like... It's very comic Yeah. Yeah. And, like the, bits and, the, and the 10,000 plans he has before if one plan fails is a bit like... Obviously having a plan is something goes wrong, but the amount of plans he has when he goes tits up is a bit ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, they're both. They're, I won't compare them because they're completely different. It's like it's like you won't compare Nicholson to any of them because he's also completely fucking different. Yeah. Oh, what? No, he's a very comic actor. I was, was going to so say yeah. If we're saying Heath Ledger's comic, um, yeah. Jack Nicholson. Jack is Nicholson like is comic. Comic, yeah. But yeah, you are, it's hard when you see your favourites. I can't compare them. I think performance. Yeah. Heath Ledger, no, backing things, fucking amazing as well. To be honest. But yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. No, I don't really compare them because it's hard to do. Yeah, they're all they're all good in their own way. Yeah, kind of thing. Each of them have their strengths. How do you both feel about this new Joker? Apart I'm well excited. Apart from Jared Leto. Um, yes. What? Apart from Jared Leto. No, I'm in the new film. I know no, that's what I'm saying. I said they're, they're all good, just apart from Jared Leto. You mean, can't talk about Jared Leto. <laughs> well, I just did. <laughs> no, yeah, I, he's he's a bit like that in general. <clears throat> seen clips from him. I don't think he's like, a shit actor. I just I don't think he can do superhero stuff. I think or, he likes himself a little bit too much. I don't know. I don't have anything against him, but I do. <laughs> yeah, I could tell you do. He was really good in the house. I saw a clip from him. And yeah, he was second house. I didn't like house of Gucci. Oh my god, I was actually I was I was okay. No, I I thought he was okay. I didn't like House of Gucci at all. I, I did. Boring. Yeah, but so boring. I think that's the thing. Like us three all have very different tastes of films. That's good though, right? Yeah, yeah, gets a bit different, but, but I thought he was okay. I quite liked him in House of Gucci. Yeah, Mario for me. Yeah. Mario. Mario, yeah. No, very Italian. All the, everyone else is very subtle Italian. Yeah. And then you got Jared Leto. He's like, like very like... He's like, he's very like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were saying that Jared Leto was in Mario for a minute then. I was like, I don't remember him being in Mario. Yeah, but he, yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he, he he's Yoshi. He's <laughs> Yoshi. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no. Every time I see that uh, Joker trailer, I get really excited. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna be. But I don't know how I feel about it being a musical. Kind see of. It working. A lot of people say that. But at the, at the same time, I can. I feel like it's gonna work. I don't think it's gonna be a musical, like. No, no, no. Not like every two seconds. No. Is. But I think it's more yeah. like a Star Wars yeah, kind of musical. Yeah, I think it will work because it's they're both insane. <laughs> so the musical numbers are just in their head, and it works because yeah. they're nutters. <laughs> And I'm intrigued thing, to know where the storyline's going to go for it. From the new trailer, it looks like it's going to focus on his trial. Yeah. yeah. So I, I thought... So I did, that's going to be in his head as well. Yeah, from the looks like, of it, yeah. Afraid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, I, what, the thing I like, what I like about the, the, that Joker is like, you don't really know what... It, it's called the unreliable narrator, correct? You don't mm. know what the hell's real or not. Yeah. And that's what I appreciate. Yeah. I mean, I think the new one would be pretty obvious, which is what's probably be a dance number. The thing is though, I, when when the first one came out, I know and like it obviously did really well. He won an Oscar. Highest for it's highest for um, grossing our rate film. Yeah, but like I feel like people like God, I heard some people say, is it should it just be a standalone film? Should they bother bringing out another one? Because you can't because they'll obviously try and updo the other one when you but when you try too hard, it's just going to fail. I don't think it would do as well as the first one. I don't think you'll because obviously there was there's a big there's a big amount of the audience that went to see the first one that didn't like it. Yeah, fair it enough. still made its money because these people went to see it, but those people won't come and watch the second one. Yeah. Yeah, the film's certainly not for everyone. It's no, a very very acquired taste kind of thing. It's a grim film. Yeah, it's I very think... like it's quite like unsettling. It's a film I haven't rewatched a lot. It's not because I didn't like it. It's because it's I, I remember oh, it very it. well. When I first got with my girlfriend, that's the first thing like I me- I remember us saying we need to watch this film because she'd never seen it, and yeah. I was like, "How have you not seen this film?" I've so seen we, it we watched it, she fell asleep. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, brilliant!" Yeah, I've yeah. seen it about three times, but it's because it sticks with me. Is that really? It sticks with me. I've seen it like three times this year. 
that film sticks with me. I remember it. It sticks with me it's for such a long a, time. Yeah, I, 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 I love the film. It's not re. It's well, not rewatchable because how crazy it is. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a grim film. Yeah. It's not a film. It's like Logan. It's like when you before I watched that, I get super depressed. <laughs> It's just like, so I don't really watch it out of films, it's just, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to get. Right. It's just a grim film, but I really like it. Mm. I obviously re it before the second one. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's more of a definite for me. Yeah. What's it come out 4th of October? Yes, well, yes, right about then. October's going to be a great month, we've got Joker at the start and then Venom at the end. <laughs> and Terrifier 3. No one cares about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I, I only care about Venom and Joker. <laughs> I don't think for one minute we'll get Terrifier 3 at the cinema. Anymore. We didn't get the first two, so there's no reason why we get this one. <laughs> Terrifier 3 is coming out in May. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
The last night has, I think, seven aspect ratios. Yeah. And it literally, it literally bounces between all seven, like in one scene. And it's just Crazy. like, what's going on right now? You literally, the black lines are just glitching <laughs> all the way through it, and you're just like, I love for the editor. <laughs> I love like frame breaks and frame stretching and stuff like that. I couldn't explain why, but yeah. it's really frustrating in. I can tell they get it quite that, They did it a bit in Eternals as well. They overused the IMAX bits in Eternals sometimes, I think. That wasn't in IMAX very well either, was it? No, it's because no one liked it. <laughs> I really liked it when I first saw it, but now I'm just like, I don't understand why I liked this. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't, sorry. I didn't hate it, but it's like... I didn't see it. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't as bad as everyone said. It's not like the most terrible film that everyone made out. It's just very yeah. different from Marvel. It's like I feel like with Disney and Pixar stuff, I need to I need to really be excited for it to go and see it. I think Eternals would have worked better as a Disney plus show. I think because we'll, we'll, they could have fleshed out more as well. Yeah, it's one of the rare cases where it should have been Disney plus show. They're trying to introduce like ten characters and in the forty-five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it would have been much better than TV show. What's your third reason? Doing really well, but focusing on these points. I think we've talked about the third reason. It's the IMAX. Oh, they use the IMAX. We killed two birds with one stone. That's good though, right? At least yeah. we're on track. Bear in mind, he only has five reasons. We just cleared two and one. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the thing, the thing that was good about the IMAX sequences in the Dark Knight was that <clears throat> there's only like five. You're yeah, coming around. He does this. He does this really interesting thing, Christopher Nolan, where, especially in stuff like The Dark Knight Rises and The Dark Knight, when. He likes to just hang out a plane with an IMAX camera because <laughs> yeah. all of like the shots that are like big open spaces will be IMAX and then it just goes back to being frame. Yeah. It's like, I see what you did there. That's yeah. different. Like, oh, He's very smart with how he makes his films. And I'm pretty sure The Dark Knight is probably one of his only films that plays out on a normal timeline as well. Well, you start like Trudy, yeah. Well, I don't know. Because the first, the first one and the third one both don't really play out on a normal timeline, they go a bit backwards and forwards, especially the first one. But the second, the one in the middle, the Dark Knight, actually, I don't think it goes backwards or forwards. What, you're saying that it plays in order? Is yeah. What you mean? Yeah, because uh, Batman Begins definitely isn't in order. I'd be very interested to see what that is like in order. It'd probably be pretty easy. <laughs> if you can see it, but yeah. how dark I did that to Deadpool the other night. Don't know because there's not that much for beginning before the Bruce Wayne backstory. The thing is that that film's very dark though. Like you could barely see anything. It's like very like it's just dark. Well, that man begins. It's probably one of the worst 4Ks that I own because <laughs> it's too it's too bright in a lot of places, and then in other places it's too dark. It's almost like they didn't know how to make 4Ks. The one, one the one out. scene that I remember being really really like dark. Was the was the scene where Killian Murphy or Scarecrow is talking to? Must it, was it Falcone? Was that his name? In in like the prison cell. Tom Wilkinson. Yeah, in the prison cell. He's dead now as well. Yep. But like that scene was dark. I couldn't see a thing whilst watching that. I thought that scene was quite. Oh, I quite just remember there being a scene in a restaurant and everyone's faces looked like. Oh yeah. Like put a torch in front of their face <laughs> just to brighten their face up a little bit. I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, switch the lights off. Which fourth reason? Number four. My fourth reason is the Harvey Dent transformation. Mm. Believe it, I love the first time I that um, that final scene with Harvey Dent, Two, um, Two Face, Gordon, and Batman is my favourite scene in the film. Because it's really it's like off putting. It's, it's just like that conversation with Dem Frey and the fact that he is all decided by the coin. So it's that scene. It's always like, yeah. I've watched it so many times, I'm always a bit on edge. It's like, oh. And it, yeah, it's just like Two Faces transformation is probably my favourite out. Of, I think out of all the Two Faces. Have we not mentioned the hospital scene yet? It's a pretty great scene. It is a fucking great scene. Uh, the improvisation yeah. impro 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 that came across because the button didn't work. Yeah, I think the way he did that was brilliant. Yeah, <coughs> yeah it was a good. It was a good thing. Kevin to, to stay in character when it just don't it's work. It's a good idea because if they went that up, that would have cost a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, because then if they had just cut and then it went off, yeah, that would have been a massive. Risk Which thing. it did in like two seconds, like after they stopped pressing it. So it was like very lucky that they didn't just cut. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, Two Faces probably. Yeah, it's like my probably one of my favourite representations of Two Faces, and the CGI for Two Faces as well was pretty nuts for two thousand and eight. 
all the muscles and everything, it's all correct. <laughs> yeah, I hear a lot of stories about how the CGI for Two Face was really bad, but I didn't really think so. I thought it was fun. No, it's just CGI that made them. Because hmm. I think I believe all the muscles is in the correct place, and it's, at, and it's moving how muscles would work. Hmm. It's just like yeah, and it's not like him. It's not like Christopher Nolan to use effects like that either. No, but when you say because if you go and do Two Face, you don't sort of got yeah. do something. Yeah. Just paint half of his face purple. <laughs> so I believe this is a true story. Um, it's like, um the scene that he uh, allegedly directed the um, found footage saying I've been supposed to take that man. Yeah, I heard about that. I just think it's a really terrifying scene to watch. Mm. <laughs> it's always stick with me that scene. It's just like I don't know. This always it scares me. It does want to get away with being a twelve. I think it really does. Especially not because it's violent, but just because of like the whole the implication of tone of it. Yeah, yeah, that scene are like, and the implications of it as well. Would yeah. you compare that to Pattinson's Batman? Because that film's a fifteen. Yeah, I mean they're still both PG thirteen in America, but, yeah. but the thing was is when when the Batman came out, and everyone was like, "Oh, it's a fifteen, but it's only PG thirteen in America." I literally. I went in and I was like, right, so what's going to make this film a 15? I think the film had been on for about five minutes, and I was like, yeah, I completely understand why this is a 15. Yeah. I mean, it would be hard to explain to, like, a parent, but... Yeah. Well, just like a bit of the start when Paul Dunn beats the shit out of that guy. There's so much of, there's so much in that film that it's beats it a 15, but at the same time, I completely understand why it wasn't all right. Yeah, and so also the, the way how the violence was, like, that first scene was pretty... The, the excessive, the, the, the amount of times he hit him on the head. I think just the heavy breathing as well. Heavy yeah. breathing didn't help. <clears throat> and I think also the way Batman fights, he's not exactly heart light on no. him. He beats him to a pulp. Yeah. So like the, in the Dark Knight trilogy, it was just like a few hits and then the down. He beats him. Yeah. <laughs> he's not exactly. Like the train station. It's not, it's not exactly a one two punch. He beats yeah. him. <laughs> beats him off. Yeah, yeah, they get, they get, he gets them off. One thing I like about Dark Knight is Heath Ledger's preparation for Joker. Yeah, that was a bit nuts as well. How he'd let us sit in a dark room for hours on end. Yeah, and it was like Christ. Like you, you got to give him that, like the preparation for it. Yeah. The dude got ready. But that was your idea, Harry. Yeah? That wasn't my. That was one of your reasons why. Yeah, that was my sixth reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so is that the. What we do now, we have to try and think of reasons for you. <laughs> you go for it. Right, Nathan, do you want to talk about Midsommar? No. Alright. Sorry, We'll try again. Nathan, do you want to talk about Midsommar? No. Alright, how about now? You're going next, surely you're short with one. Yeah, so mine is The Incredibles, because it's just an incredible kind of film. Cool. Uh, cool. So my first reason is just because it's very nostalgic for me. Yeah. Every time I see it, it takes me back to my childhood, because yeah. that was my number about one five years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, compared. Yeah, fair enough. Um, <coughs> yeah, we're not going to talk about age. <laughs> uh, the cast as well. Craig T. Nelson, Helen Hunt, is that her name? Helen Hunt. Helen Hunt. <laughs> yeah, so and like Brad Bird. The it's not Helen Hunt. Is it Helen Hunter, isn't it? Helen something. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely not Helen Hunt. No, 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 it's like Hunter or something, right? She's the woman from... Um, if we, get, if we get this wrong, we can cut it out. What? <laughs> I'm sure it's... No, I think it's Holly. Holly Hunt. Holly Hunter. Holly Hunter, yeah, that makes sense. Why do I think Helen? Oh, because that's her name. She was in The Dark Knight as well. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's the same woman. No, wait a minute. No, she, she was in... Um, she was in Batman, Batman vs Superman. Superman. Yeah, her. Whatever the fuck her name is. Yeah, she was the... Um, Why do I think Helen Hunt? The judge. Yeah. Holly Hunter. Yeah, that's it. Bastard. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go, that's my thing done. <laughs> Was that it? No. Right, uh, so Midsummer. Uh, the theme tune as well to Incredibles is cool. To hear that, like going in and like when it starts up and you, you know you're in for a good time for an hour and 40 or whatever. But Brad Bird as well. I like no, the director. 55 minutes actually. Well done. Um, Brad Bird as well. That's, that's, that's is another reason. He, he like directed it very well. He even played Edna Mode, mm -hmm. which was crazy. The moment the film starts, it like puts you right into the action as well. I like the storyline of it as well. 
like how you know he saves someone that doesn't want to be saved, and then they sue, the and then they sue them because yeah. the, the suits as well. The suits are great. I, uh, yeah, you're just trying to get through your list as quickly as possible. Well, none of you seem to be fucking talking about it, so I'm just getting on. And then, and then last but not least, the characters. Just gotta love the characters. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's a family of superheroes. Yeah. It's a quality film. And Samuel L. Bloody Jackson as yeah. fucking Frozone as you well. You got the worst my super suit. Exactly. I'm not you Samuel got... L. Motherfucking Jackson. Yeah. So, yeah, you got some. You got you got a great cast, great story. Just great all around. It's just it's just a ten out of ten kind of film, you know. So, what did you think of the sequel? I loved it. But I feel like I only liked it purely because I'd waited so long for a second one. To the point where I was like, this is just cool. But no, I, 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 obviously it's not as good as the first one, obviously. But I, 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 I did like it. I thought it was great. I really liked it. Mm. I went to, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the second film. Yeah. I went to see it more than once in the second. I started like 30 seconds after the first got finished. Yeah. Yeah. Bearing in mind we've waited like 15 years for the for, for the next film and it starts like two seconds after it's the first one. It's weird because it felt like you never like, didn't wait that long. Well, I think it sequels yeah. do that. It's very few sequels that do do no. that. But it was, it was, yeah, it was a good idea. But then it do, doesn't it cut like a few months later? Yeah, they like kind of round off that part of the story. And yeah. On. Yeah. Can't, I can't, I can't say anything bad about the Incredibles. You can. I, 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 go on, try me. Exactly. Took too, too long. You can't say nothing bad about the Incredibles. I said you can, not me. I, 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 I can't say anything bad about it. It could have been more violent. To be fair, I would like to like yeah. I suppose I have to. I wouldn't even say more violence in it because it's like perfect. For, it's like the perfect kid film. I would have said more violence. Yeah, I'd like to see like Mr. Incredible beat the shit out of some guy. That's not pretty nice. Yeah, picks are known for their violence, ain't they? <laughs> yeah. Violently tugging at people's heartstrings, maybe. <laughs> But no, I, I yeah, I can't say anything bad about the film. It's not even plus for a third one yet. There's nothing on here. No, there's nothing. Nothing. No, but I sincerely hope that there is, because it's just such a money maker as well. Yeah. Like I'll go and see it nine times if I have to. <laughs> I'll go and never talk about that. So, do you want a drink? Yes, please. Oh, shit. All right. Talk about it. Um. What can I start? Can you not? Number one. <laughs> yeah, that that would help. Well, uh, it's number thirteen. They're not in order. They're not in order. Let's put it that way. Well, yeah, but still start with number one. Whatever's first one. Start with number five. Oh, Why are you got to be so different? Just tracking this out. I like midsummer. Shocking. Just say that thirteen times. You're right. Have you ever eaten crisps before? <laughs> What's that slow motion? That's so loud. Yeah. Can be right. So I love how the whole film looks in 4K, from the opening shot to the last shot, the picture detail and the sound is all amazing. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Is that it? Well, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, right. a, it's a good looking. It's like openly discuss it. Oh, it's a good looking film. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, number two then, if you're going to... Of course. What would you want number two? Uh, Ari Aster's best film. Yeah, that's very easy, yeah. I think it's his best film. To be fair, I didn't really like Hereditary. I like all his films. Uh, I'm, surprised, films I'm surprised there's something wrong with the Johnsons was allowed to be shot, let alone released. No, oh, I haven't seen that. I've seen his I wouldn't watch it. I've just seen his three theatrical releases. There's something wrong with the Johnsons has got something wrong with it. Shocking. Bobby's Afraid though. I love Bobby's Afraid. It's a I really good cinematic expression of anxiety. Hmm. How like you can't tell what's in his head and what's not for a lot of the film. Yeah. In my number three. Uh can you not? I'm almost done. Bear I, love, uh, I love Will Falter and Flor- 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 Florence Pugh. I think it's their best films. As annoying as Will Poulter's character is in the film. He's meant to be annoying, though. He, yeah, that's what I think. He's meant to be annoying. He's meant to be there to be frustrating. And he's kind of a little like the comic relief, <laughs> sort of. Especially with some of the things he talks about, particularly in the director's car. Yeah, he's the comic relief in a dick way. 
Do you, do you think that film is what got Florence Pugh her, her fame? Yes, either way. Because there's, after you see the, uh, literally I'd, maybe one or two scenes after everything's happened on the mountain, if you listen closely, there's, um, Will, why are you laughing? Will Park was watching a, uh, a video on YouTube about, like, this woman who's sucking off some guy and they have a car accident and she ends up biting his knob off. And I'm just like, it's such right, a right. way to fuse the tension a little bit after something like that had just happened. Yeah, that moment bit was pretty like, what the fuck? Yeah, I remember you laughing when we saw that in the eye, man. <laughs> yeah. I just remember you nearly falling out of your seat when it made you jump. It was a good jump scare. It was so funny. It's a great jump scare. <laughs> I like sure me and your dad were both laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> I like a good jump. I like jump scares. You don't see them coming. It's like that's the best jump scare. So I like that jump scare. I was like, oh, that's a good one. I didn't see it coming at all. It's not, a t- it's not a build up to it. Even it just happened. Yeah, that's why it's good. So number four. Oh no, wait. We're still on number three. All right. Florence is crying. It's fucking ridiculous. It's really annoying. I mean, you could have a drink along with how many times she cries and you'll probably end up in the hospital after the first four or five minutes. But she never like cries. It's always the heaviest crying I've ever heard in my life. And there's like that choir of crying at the end when the girls join you. Yeah. Could be a very stressful t- for, for time. Yeah, for maybe working with every hairstyle was difficult. Maybe you kept talking about there's something wrong with the Johnsons. And it just kept crying. Do you not like Harry Aston? I love him. Oh. Well, yeah, sort of. I like Spice Afraid and Midsummer. I don't like anything else he's done. Although I will look forward to his new film when it's out. What's it called? The Saint Rome of the Johnson? I hope not. <laughs> There's still something wrong with the Johnson. There's still yeah. something wrong with the Johnson. <laughs> um, so, number four, I love how it was shot. Yeah. I know they used them cameras really good, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> I do like that that frame. Them I, like, I love the frame because it's not quite full on black bars, it's almost like half of them instead. I don't know why that's a thing for me, but I love the upside down stuff that he does, especially when the car's driving on the road and the camera turns around. I don't know, I just love things like that. The breathing flowers and how it makes you feel like you've taken the drugs that the characters have taken and you get to experience that through through the cinema as well. Which kind of moves on a little bit to number five, which is all about the trees and the bushes. And how, the there's, bushes. how there's... Uh, different faces in the trees and you can see animals in the trees I literally the amount of times I've watched that and I've just been staring at the trees even when I watched it I think last week I think it was last week I was just like looking so much at stuff in the background all the way through the film which is quite sad to be fair but yeah I'm no, sure to be fair I like, no- to I, like I like noticing stuff in the background of films though oh Someone... I can show you I can show you some things you know, there are some really cool bushes. Yeah. Did you see some of those faces? Oh, oh. Couldn't we just go to a rainforest? I'm pretty sure I spotted one on the mountain <laughs> as well. It's just fascinating to me. People say that it makes it more creepy, but I'm like, it doesn't really make it creepy for me. It just, it was just fascinating for me. Look. So uh, we can move these bits. You see that? No, I didn't. Cool. It's a bush. No, you see the face in the bush. <laughs> Where? It's a bush. Where? <laughs> but there's no face. What are you <laughs> on about? You got an eye there, and an eye there, and a nose there, and a mouth. How do you not see? Wait, that? wait, wait. Actually, bear with me two secs. Oh, I see it now. Cool. Oh, is this really cool for an audio podcast? Oh, yeah. yeah, I see it. Now. There you go, guys. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. See. We can. I can put. I can put these images on there. Cool. Um. Big Edison. Big Edison man. Mr. Edison himself. <coughs> oh, see now I can't see it. <laughs> oh yeah, on the mountain there. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the most the most famous one. Did I show you the most famous one? Are you talking to me later? You. You sent me that a lot. Of, you literally sent me all the photos you could see. You probably did. That's the most famous one in the top left-hand corner there. Oh yeah. That's the one that most people spot and most people notice. Yeah, I could probably see that one. Oh yeah, you sent me that. Apparently, that's meant to be 
her sister with the mask on at the beginning. Oh yeah, I see that. See, I can, I can put these pictures in so that people can see what we're talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, literally every time I watch it, I either find one that I couldn't find before. I saw a fox, when I saw it in the IMAX, I saw like a fox or a dog in one of the bushes and I literally haven't seen it again since. <laughs> I try so hard to find this dog, but I just can't find it. Do you not remember where you saw it? Probably I remember bushes. vaguely where, I know that it was on, I know the colour of the, I know the colour of the trees, and I know that it was in the left hand side of the picture, but I just can never find it. I can never find it. It's really annoying. Every time I'm thinking, oh, I, oh did, is that it? Then the camera changes and I'm just like, great. Nice okay, I guess that's what I did with some of these. Uh, so, number six. It's an incredible horror film without mm. really being a horror film. Why is that funny? It's not. I like that it's a horror film that doesn't rely on strong, yeah. brutal violence all the way through just to make it entertaining. Yeah. I mean, not that I mind horror films that do that. <laughs> But yeah, it was, I mean, there's still, there's still, obviously, there's still violence in it. Yeah. But it's not like one of those, cool, look, this is really scary because he just tore her head off. I, I saw, I saw it in a violent nature the other day. I heard that film wasn't very good. It's not. Oh. It's like they tried to remake Friday the 13th and then shot the whole thing from Jason Voorhees' his back. <laughs> oh, yeah, so much of it is just him walking through the woods. But there's this really, there's this really random kill in it where... He runs up to this, he's walking behind this girl, and this girl sees her, sees her, she sees him behind her, and she goes to run, but then she realises she can't, because she stood on the end of the cliff. So instead of running to the left or to the right instead, she just stands there and lets him kill her. And I was like, well, that was a bit weird. But she turns round, so she can't see it coming. So then he pushes this thing through her, so she's got like this like little hole. He then pushes this hook through her and attaches it to her head and then pulls her head through the hole. So she's basically her head is coming out of her back. And I was just like, that's so over, it was so over the top. And I was like, is this supposed to be making the film scary? Because there's like, really, it's just really brutal, violent. Like this isn't, <clears throat> like there are some films that are really brutal and violent by it. Like, it kind of makes sense, but this was just like, it just felt really silly. Just trying to get over the top. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the better parts of the film, but yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, number seven. Number seven. I love the opening. I love how it starts and how it introduces everyone and everything that happens with her sister. I mean, obviously, I don't enjoy what happens with her sister, but it was just like... It was such a way to to open a film like that. Yeah. It's really all I have to say about that bit. <laughs> oh, okay, interesting. I might have done one part. Oh, no, it's different. All right. Oh. All right. So, <laughs> uh, number eight. Uh, I see something or notice something, but I didn't notice pretty much every time I see it. Even down to things that characters are saying. Like, I notice about Pele talking to Florence about his parents dying in a fire. It made me think like, I wonder if they were, Children. they were sacrifices there and he stayed. Because mm -hmm. he seems to be that sort of guy that like, sees what they're doing and he's like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, like all of those people that are part of that plan are like, oh yeah, we're meant to do this. When you get to 17, you're just meant to die. And certain people are just like, what, that's stupid. And there are the odd weirdo that agrees with them. And I'm guessing he was probably one of them. But yeah, there's loads of little, like I noticed uh, uh, Florence Pugh's bedding has got the shining carpet on it as well. <laughs> it's just like, cool, there's all these, so yeah, you'll see it next time. People are like, cool, that's the carpet from the shining. Cool. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I guarantee when they made it, they were just like, oh, we'll just get any old random blanket. <laughs> it just happened to be that pattern. I'm willing to bet it's there to be a reference yeah. to the shining. Yeah. Like they did that in Toy Story as well. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah, the carpet in Sid's house and Toy Story is the same so yeah. uh, Number nine. Number nine, it's a three hour film, but you don't really. Why is that good? It being three hours long. Right, that's why. Yeah, I like watching a long film where you don't notice the long time. 
Like there are some films that are long that I like, but I'm just like, oh, this film's taking ages. You know, a bit like Avatar. Yeah. You know, I enjoy them, but you definitely feel those long times. Especially in water. Yeah, and the abyss. Jesus, you definitely feel the long time with the abyss. Especially as nothing happens for like the first hour, except for when they drown a rat, which is cut out in England. So I've never actually seen that scene. It's on the 4K release. Get it imported, guys, get it imported. Yeah. Yeah, you have. I know you have. You've got it before me. Yeah. You probably still haven't seen it, though, have you? It's a free hour film. We need to find time for it. You say that, but have you seen any of the Blu-rays that you bought recently? Yeah. Yeah? All the way through? Yeah. Cool, are you all right? Yeah. I don't sound it. Yeah. Uh, number 10. The director's cut and the theatrical cut are both very different. So much that if you watch the director's cut loads of times and then watch the theatrical cut, you literally feel like you're watching highlights of the director's cut. Mm. Even though it's only like, it's only by about 20 minutes, but there's so much. It just, I don't know, it feels very different. There you go, that was exciting, wasn't it? Is that the 13? No, oh. that's number 10. Sorry. Don't get too excited, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> it's only three more, I think. Yeah, it's only three more. Uh, it's a great story. With great character de- de- development, de- development, with great character development, all the way through. Like they're always, the f- it's very focused on the characters all the way through, and what they're going through, and what they're feeling. It makes you feel that as well. Feelings. I don't have many of those, but yeah, I'm pretty dead inside. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, number twelve. It uh, it builds slowly to a, a great payoff. Yeah. Not as in the film slow. No. But, but no, it's worth it when you get to the end. Yeah. Especially when you see that guy banging that woman and there's like 12 other old women just standing around naked watching and singing. That's the second scene I laughed at. Yeah. It's like, it's oh, it's stop laughing watching that. And she starts pushing his bum when he wants to stop. She starts forcing him to keep going. So he, they technically rape him. <laughs> Like, considering how many drugs they give him before he goes in there as well. Yeah. So he's off filming that scene as well. It's so awkward. No, he enjoyed it. I've, I've seen interviews with him doing that. He talks about going full frontal on purpose. And he talks about how uh, whenever there's like full frontal nudity in films, it's always focused on women. So it was like he wanted there to be more of men in there because it was only fair sort of thing. Fair enough. Makes sense. But yeah, it's yeah, quite funny how he like has has massive sex for half an hour and then loses his boner in like five seconds. And I'm pretty sure that probably wouldn't happen. But you know, I, I've never had sex with thirteen women at the same time. So I mean, not that he does, but still, maybe that's what put him off because there was an old wrinkly lady touching his bum. Maybe this is a massive turn off really quickly. It's like, oh. it's like right, I'm done. And the last one, I love the disturbing side of it how sometimes it's really subtle and sometimes it's like in your face you know like with the mountains it's very much in your face kind of literally as well when they get that hammer out yeah and then obviously there's subtle moments where you see things behind people and stuff like that that you don't really notice or you might notice I don't know but yeah that's all my my exciting 13 reasons why I liked Midsommar so, we've had a very new release. I think it was like some sort of Marvel film or whatever. Back to the Future. <laughs> a Blue Beetle? Yeah, Jurassic Park. <laughs> uh, Hawkeye. Oh, Hawkeye. Hawkeye in the movie. Haw- Hawkeye versus the Green Arrow. That's what I said. That's what we said. <laughs> <clears throat> no, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine came out on the 25th. Um, but yeah, no, it was a very good film. Um, I'm trying to like... Try not to say there's not entertaining, yeah, very entertaining. It's really funny. Um, it's only two hours and 18 minutes, though. It's the longest Deadpool film, I know, but it, doesn't, it, it, it goes quite quickly, yeah, of course, it does because you're enjoying it. Yeah, I can't say there's a low point in the film at all. It looks too, don't you? I really want to watch it again. <laughs> See, because it's a good film, it's right? right so, let's wrap up this podcast because me and Harry are going to go back. There's one at 420. Oh, no, it's cool. 420, we can get high before we go in. Um. But yeah, that's my opinion. The uh, 
There is not a mid credit scene, but there is a. Was there an end credit scene? There's, there's, an end scene. Credit scene, there's there? not a mid one. Well, there's one during the credits. Oh yeah, well, we the... say was, it was a credit scene. It was yeah. A, oh, homage. It was a celebration. Yeah. Keep an eye out for all the little ace tokens in the background. For sure, because they're. Some of the surprise cameos as well. Yeah, surprise cameos as well. I, I, know, I mean, obviously, yeah, like I feel like most of. I feel like you get. With a film like this, you should expect surprise cameos. Um, but yeah, no, it was a cracker of a film. I've seen it three times, and I'll probably end up seeing it again at some point. Um, the best opening scene, as well, of a film I've ever seen. It was a pretty amazing the be- there, There's no film can open better than that. Um, Except for Midsommar. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know, that, yeah, that opening scene was pretty special. <laughs> it was amazing. But... Uh, yeah, I think Ryan Reynolds knocked it out of the park again. Yeah. With Deadpool. Yeah. I think it's best to not go into the film expecting Deadpool 3. Nice. No, I see it as more of a standalone. It's a film with Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, it is. the title. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason why it's called Deadpool and Wolverine because it's not, it's both of their films. It's not focused on Deadpool, it's focused on both of them. Yeah. It's their film. You still got all the quirks of the first Deadpool. Oh, yeah. And second Deadpool have, but it's definitely. Yeah, it's not a standalone Deadpool yeah. film. It's Deadpool and Wolverine. And you. I tell you what, though, the film was. It, it was a celebration of Wolverine as well. Yeah. They've got him spot on. They've got, we've got a, a proper comics accurate Wolverine. I'm not it's saying. Same that, actor, sorry. No, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and the suit helped as well. Like, no, it's a true comics accurate version. Mm. Yeah, the suit. Hugh Jackman was pretty perfect. It was perfect anyway. It's just, you're putting it down the suit. All of the break in the fourth wall as well. That whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So with it being Deadpool, you kind of expect it, but it's just he it took. I think every what a few minutes there was a fourth wall break. Even if they were just Deadpool and Wolverine was just having a conversation, they'd still break the fourth wall. Yeah. Which is great because it, it it just sums up Deadpool. But it's great. What like really good film. So it three times and all three times I've rated it ten out of ten, so I can't complain. Oh, is that it? Is that it? Before Deadpool, before I don't know. Do you have anything else you want to add? Well, not really, because I want to spoil the film. I love the three D side of it. Three D was pretty cool. I love the frame breaks in there, and the cameos were pretty great as well. They're yeah, different sort of cameos. Yeah, but they work, and they didn't feel like they were just there to be a cameo. They were in the film for a significant amount of time. Yeah, like the first cameo. That he was in it for a lot longer than I really thought he would be as that character. Yeah. So it was pretty. Yeah, the cameos weren't like, and also the other ones as well. I feel they were in it more than I thought it would be. Yeah. I feel like if you haven't, if you were very clever and avoided spoilers, obviously you wouldn't. Yeah. Because with with a film like this, obviously spoilers will spread like wildfire. So. Um, there was spoiler. <clears throat> out already. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you type in Deadpool Wolverine, you need to be careful. Yeah, one of one of the cameos or characters that came in was in uh, at the end of a trailer, so it was like. Well, they had to do that because that that specific person went to the premiere. Yeah. So they sort of had to reveal that that person yeah. was in the film. I'm saying this person because I just. It's already in the trailer. Yeah, and you'll be swept. Yeah, Daphne Kane. She was at the premiere. Sort of yeah. had to show her. Who? Daphne Kane. Who's that? X twenty three. Laura. Oh, right. Spoiler alert. She's in the trailer. Is she? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even joking. But yeah, no. Uh, very well anticipated film and can't complain about it. But, next up, upcoming 4Ks and my obvious. Yeah, there's quite a, few, there's, there's a lot of shit coming out. There's a lot of shit coming out as well. That's so rude. I, I, I have a 4K at home. I'm uh, going to review it later, so check out my channel in the description. Self plus a plug there. Um, yeah, I've How also. Been advertising your channel on mine. I appreciate it. So and I, I actually that. do think some of the people from here have come over. So if you have, I very much appreciate it. Because I actually, someone commented in my video and I responded. So, yes, thank you very much. Who was it? Yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> it's not, I know it's not very nice that I can't remember, but I, I, it's very, disrespectful. I do very much appreciate it. I wonder if it's someone um, from mine. But yeah, I've, I I have three things coming. Oh. That's weird. 
So I have The Killing Joke on 4K Steelbook. I probably would like well. I've got Knuckles, the Steelbook coming, and I've also got Godzilla X Kong coming, and and also the Joker. I've got that coming as well. So you keep yeah, saying coming. I know, right? So yeah, I'm very excited to get one of those, and when I do, yeah, I'm gonna have a field day. I've got a lot on my list. I want to get. Um, a bit of Sweet Life just came out on 4K. I want to get that. Um, Monkey Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Monkey Man has a, a different ending. Yes, one alternative ending included, so I'd love to see what it yeah. is. Um, yeah, um, Civil War's meant to be a decent 4K. Yeah, but it's not a decent film, is it? So. <laughs> we'll see what that looks like. Well, I've still got to get the Beekeeper on 4K. Yeah. I need to order that. Get that on eBay. Yeah, I need to, I need to pull my finger out. Because that was one of my uh, like favourite films this year. Trick or Treat's finally coming out in the UK. Yeah, yeah I don't, can you even get that on Blu-ray over here? No. So that'd be nice. I'd like to see that. We still have no... I don't know what's going on with Terrifier. Don't know what's going on with Seven either. No, Seven's not even got a uh, pretend release date on Amazon anymore. No. Obviously A Quiet Place Day 1 will be out in the next couple of months. Yeah. Bad Boys 4. Yeah. Bad Boys 4 was really good as well. I really enjoyed that. Really uh, the Exodus 3 is getting a 4K release. Uh, it's funny that releasing Exodus 2 as well, but not giving that a 4K because the film's shy. So <laughs> maybe that's why. It's yeah, probably why. It's uh, just, allegedly, Nightmare on Elm Street will be out at the end of the year. Uh, Terminator should be coming out this year as well. Twist Star will be out in October. Uh, got um, Man from Uncle out this week, and um, during all the sites, the Lambs is coming out in the UK. And um, the Chronicles of Riddick is coming out as well. I think they said the Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't got a full to be honest. I'm not. It's made by Disney. Oh yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Chronicles so, of Riddick. Netflix now, isn't it? Didn't Netflix buy it? No, it'd be on Disney. No, Plus. um, they're making a show. Yeah. Oh right. So that's right. I thought I thought Netflix brought the rights to. Narnia. They bought the rights to Narnia, but not. The films that have already been made. No, no, no. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Netflix so, owns Narnia now. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. I didn't. I yeah, know, I know not the film. Yeah, yeah. They own the rights to it, but don't own the rights to the films. Yeah, yeah. Disney. No, yeah, yeah. The yeah. woman who directed Barbie's making. Yeah, Greg Gerwig. Is it Greg Gerwig? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Clash of the Titans was coming out on 4K, but not Ooh. the original. I have a question. Um, Gladiator Two. Yeah. Isn't that? I've heard loads of people say it looks the exact same as the first one. Much. It's just the same story again. It does look like a story, but well, no, but yeah, people. I've heard loads of people say it looks like another revenge story. story so. It feels like it feels. Like, I when I saw that trailer, I was just like, I feel like it would have it would have benefited a lot more if they would have called it something else because mm. it looks okay, but everyone's going to go in there thinking, so how's this going to be related to Gladiator? I think they should have just removed the. References to the first Gladiator and just made another standalone mm. Gladiator type film and just called it something else. Yeah. Another film I watched that I thought was quite good was Maxine. I thought Maxine was quite good. I really like Maxine. Yeah, it was quite a, quite a good film. I didn't mm. mind Maxine, I thought Maxine was okay. Yeah, I watched, I watched X before it. I haven't seen Pearl still, but I've heard You've it. You've not missed much. Yeah. yeah. I would still recommend watching Pearl though. Yeah. But no, Maxine was a pretty good film. I don't think Pearl was very good. They're all three from different types of horror films. Yeah, uh, yeah. what else we got? Uh, what the else Boy and the Herring. I've got that. It's coming out. It's coming out in September. In October. I've worked from America. It's coming out in October. Yeah. You said September. Um, one of them's out in September. And the still book. The still book's out in October. No, oh, I know one of them's out in September. Oh, right, you don't have to. Uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes will be out next month. Yeah. As so will uh, that other film that's out in October. Not October, August. Yeah, <laughs> still books out in October. Furiosa. It's on August. Furiosa's out in August. What excited to get that. I really like Furiosa. Cool. Oh, the Fall Guy's out in August. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting to that. Oh, should be a quick one. I'm usually pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mind, I didn't mind Fall Guy. That was okay. Yeah. Uh, Godzilla, X Kong, 
He's out now. I think he's out now. According to this, he's out now. So maybe it came out on Monday. Yeah, probably. Stardust is out in September. Yeah, but no one cares about Stardust. In October, uh, Twister's Twister out. Twister is out, the first one. It's got a 4K release. It's really expensive though. Yeah, it's actually cheaper to buy from America. That's what I'm going to do. On here, it's £45. It's cheaper to buy from America. Do they have more than one edition of this? Because I don't really know if I want to spend £45 on I'm going to get it from America. It's cheaper. Well, I don't care. It's cheaper. This is still because we're on that might sucks, don't Yeah. Um. Hmm. No, there's no other. It's just, that's well rude. What if I didn't. Mean? See, they do that sometimes now. Like when the Rave came out, you could only get it as a steel book. I mean, not that I'm complaining, I would have got the steel book anyway, but for people that don't want to spend that much money or collect that sort of thing, mm. it's not very fair on them. Shut up. Any upcoming releases you guys are excited about? I'm I'm I've said like Venom film. and Joker. Oh, film wise. Uh, Alien Romulus, that's probably my most anticipated after Deadpool. That comes out October, doesn't it? Oh, I'm August. Oh, yeah, well, I was going to say it's out in a couple of weeks. Why does it why does October? Well, I've really seen the, I've seen the trailer for it three times, Ben, because they play it before. Um, Trap looks interesting. It's a, it's a surprise that M Night spoiled his twist straight away. No, I don't think he has. Mm. He's not that stupid to put the twist in the film in the trailer. What what what, what would you say the twist was? I've seen the trailer, but what would you say? In, the, in the trailer, you see that Josh Hartley is the person that they're looking for. Yeah, he's the killer. But is he? Mm. I think it'd be really funny if the twist turns out that he's it the It does one. look like a pretty good film, though. I'm, I, I'm intrigued enough to watch it. Yeah, I'll still see it. Uh, oh, Borderlands is out, I guess. Uh, Speak No Evil's out on the 9th, which is a remake of, well, Speak No Evil. Do you want the, the Crow uh, coming out as well? Yeah, the yeah. Like on the 8th. I really want to see the Crow, to be fair. When that first trailer came out, everyone was like, I can't believe they've done this, should. Dishonouring the original, maybe because the guy who played him died. How that dishonours the film, though, I don't know, because they made like three sequels afterwards. So. Um, but I I think, I think the new Crow looks all right. I, I'll watch it. Look forward to seeing it. Took me took me like a couple glances to realise that was Bill Skarsgård. Yeah. But, It'll probably be a 15. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be brutal enough to be an 18. I mean, it's in the Red Band trailer as well, which isn't really that different to the trailer that we play at the cinema. Well. This, this, this shows a bit of him throwing two heads into an audience. Uh, I think the amount of the amount of violence that you get away with in 15 these it's, days is quite a significant. Yeah. Uh, Borderlands is out. So. Are you excited for that? No. Not, really. not happy at it's 12 yeah. yeah. That's strike number one. I feel like they've just done that just to get the kids in. It's easy for the kids. But why? Like, isn't it like an 18 rated game? The opinion of the games here, people don't really care about ratings. Because you can, I, you, it's not, it's easy to, not as easy to ID. Because people just buy online. No, I don't mean from the ID perspective. I mean like, it's, if but, it's uh, 18 rated, that surely means it's brutal or, you know. It's pretty brutal, the games. Or yeah. raunchy in some way. I don't They're know. Pretty raunchy really, as well at some point. Yeah, see what I mean, right? You're not going to get that in a PG-13 slash 12A rated movie, are you? Nope. So that's strike one. The film might still might be decent, but I ain't got much hope for it. Seems more comedic. I mean, uh, that makes sense, because the games are pretty comedy heavy as well. Mm. I thought I played one game. I might, have, so I might have even played the first one. Yeah. It's yeah. directed by Eli Roth, <coughs> who's very hit and miss with me. I never really like his films, or they're just not very good. Thanksgiving was really good. I really like Thanksgiving. That was such a fun film. It's really funny for a horror film. Yeah. Although I guess it's meant to be, but... Well, yeah, it's a, bit, it's, it's a bit of satire, ain't it? Yeah. Um, Never Let Go. I'm just looking at my list now. Never Let Go. That's that rope film, isn't it? I never touch to the house. And they're not allowed to go further than the stretch of the rope. I've got no idea. It's got Halle Berry in it. I've got no idea what you want about. You haven't seen the trailer for Never Let Go? Nope. Oh, you probably should. You'd like that. Craig and the Hunter. Although apparently that's going to be an 18. Well, I'm not sure if I'm Is that actually there. coming out? <laughs> oh, I forgot that film exists. <laughs> Is that actually coming out? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was due to come out sooner and then they... Now, the only thing I like it. about that film currently is the fact that Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson is in it. Because I like him as an actor. But... 
I don't know if he's going to be enough to save it though. Mm. But apparently he doesn't have a Russian accent in this. No, he doesn't. Russell Crowe does. <laughs> that sounds amusing. Well, you know what? He's coming out in September. Mickey's Mouse Trap. Ha! Oh, is that the the horror film, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, but about oh. Mickey Mouse. I doubt. Because they have we'll, to use the original like thing, right? I doubt it will be in the cinema. Yeah, Disney lost um um Steamboat right. Willie is um public domain now, so the original Mickey Mouse. Crazy. That's uh, why people there's a lot of stuff in like that old Steamboat Willie art style is coming out now mm. because they can use it. Got Smile Two in October as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. You probably haven't seen the first one, have you? You don't really do horror films, do you? No. That's not seen the first one. Speaking of horror films, there's a prequel to The Lion King coming out as well. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know how I feel about that at all. I don't think that's going to be any good. Mm. Uh, do they have James Earl Jones in it? They no, don't, do they? Probably not. I think he does all this. It's called the fast one. Yeah, it's too is. old. Yeah, we got this set the recording booth. Yeah, it doesn't look good. very good. I don't know. When I saw that first trailer, I was like, it just doesn't. It didn't look very good at all. Yeah, and the music. As much I do, I do like the Man Warrior. I like certain stuff, but some some stories don't need his music. He stole of music, I mean, like the rap. Mm. Like, when he, with the Little Mermaid remake, you can clearly tell which songs were new because they were a rap. <laughs> so you've got like, a part of this world in a rap song, it's like, okay, I well, know which fair, one's new. Some, some, some films just don't need making. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. There is that. Yeah. There it, are a lot of films that I'm just like, why do you bother? Yeah. But like most horror films now, I know I, I, I don't like horror films, but they're just all the same. Some guy goes around killing people, and then in the end, either dies or gets killed in the film, but actually survives in the end. Well, in oh yeah, yeah. It's like, it's Nine just times out of ten, the killer's not dead at the end, unless yeah. it's Scream. Yeah, because the killer's different in each Scream film. Yeah, it just seems like it's just all the same kind of shit. They're doing something with Halloween again. That's what I want, though. Apparently, I mean. Needless to say, we didn't need the last Jedi, otherwise a Skywalker, but that's besides the point. I'm going back to that again. We're going to spend another hour on that. Of course, we're going to go Star Wars. Because that's the only film I can kind of relate to that didn't even make it. I've got a Star Wars video out next week. Cool. At least, to be fair, we'll probably be out before this is, but still. It's in my hand so long. Uh, yeah, it's on there, yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I'll take the piss out of you a little bit as well. That's alright, mate, you do what you need to. You knock your flask over. Sorry, sorry, probably just not alright. Yeah, I assume that's everything we want to talk about today. We've done really well. Yeah, we, we have the intro. We've done that. We'll do the intro now, quick, again. Just pop the intro in at the end. Yeah. Just confuse people. They're what? like, what? Yeah. Well, the, look, the, intro, the intro has just finished playing now. So. I can always cut it out at the beginning and just put it in at the end. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Um, a yeah, lot of rambling. A lot of rambling. That's the title, Contain That's Strong always. Rambling. Um, yeah, we could do that. Um, yeah, if you guys enjoy, Harry. leave a like, it really helps us out. And subscribe to the channel if you're new. Subscribe to Ethan's channel as well. Selfless plug. You can't subscribe to Harry, unless it's on a yellow and black website. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, you can cut that out. Um, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Um, You've got a Pornhub account. Yeah. Yeah, so have I. <laughs> anyway, see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Remember, Bye. subscribe to my OnlyFans. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Your first month is free if you use code. Don't subscribe. Oh. You What's... have an OnlyFans page. No. I was going to say, please tell me that's a joke. It is a joke. Are you really that desperate? Yeah. Anyway, bye. Bye. Bye.